What about Vietnam? What about Vietnam? A podcast with Kerry Newsom. So much to see and do. What about Vietnam? Everything you need to know before you go. Let Kerry pave the way for an amazing holiday in Vietnam. What about Vietnam? Xin chào and welcome to What About Vietnam. My name is Kerry Newsom and I am your host. You are listening to the What About Vietnam series, everything you need to know before you go. My aim is to pass on as much information as I can to ensure you have a great trip. In the previous episode, we got into detail around money, tipping, travel insurance, ATMs, and whether or not you should get a SIM card. I trust you got some good tips from that episode. In this session, I want to take you down the path uh, in the trip planning phase of booking your accommodation. I know when I'm uh, trip planning and I get to this stage of booking accommodation, uh, I really feel like I'm going. So I'd like to share with you the kind of value you can expect to get for your money. And also in broad brush strokes, I'd like to give you some insights into the kind of experiences and quality of stays you can expect to find. So let's dive in. When looking for accommodation in Vietnam, I want to offer you five ruling guidelines. And this way, it will ensure that you get the type of stay and the value for money that you deserve. Always check the location and proximity to city centre or places of interest. Hanoi, it's really best to be close to Ho Kiam Lake uh, in the old quarter. Uh, You might find the accommodation there is um, a little bit noisier than if you were further away because obviously that's where the hustle and bustle of the tourists um, are focused. Uh, However, you know, it is a beautiful part of the town. Uh, You have access to the lake and it's definitely worth um, considering. So I try not to go any further than about, you know, less than one kilometre to the, the lake. In uh, Hoi An, I do the same. Uh, You know, there are a couple of different kinds of experiences that you can have there. Walk, walking distance to the old town, or you can be at the beach. Either is ideal, but if it says two to four kilometres away from either, that's just too far. Less than one kilometre is ideal. I mean, in Hoi An, I have been known to move from a hotel because it was falsely described as close to a particular area I wanted to be. Being stuck out somewhere too far can be annoying. And when you know you don't have to pay that uh, much more to be closer, you know, why would you put up with it? So just think about that, um, uh, that mapping and the distance from where you want to be. Always check your room size. Something this is, um, you know, it, it, Room sizes tends to be something people skip over. It's actually one of the first things I go to. So 15 to 20 square metres is very small. For a middle-sized room for two people, always start at around 25 square metres. It's easy to get in Vietnam, so don't put up with small if you don't have to. I never go for less and possibly I'll go for 30 square metres if I'm going to be staying there for a long time, just so I can stretch and spread my stuff out a little bit more. I tend to be a bit messy, messy like that. Check it has a window. You'd be surprised how many accommodations um, I've heard people say, yeah, but there was no window. It was claustrophobic. Um, That's crazy. But it is something that very easily is um, overlooked. So, you know, you may want to be careful when you're looking and you go, oh, that's a great bargain, only to find it doesn't have a window. Uh, I would look also in the reviews of the accommodation and they will come either in um, the suite that, or the channel that you're looking. So that's an Agoda view or a booking.com or, or whatever. And, you know, go further into other reviews like, you know, TripAdvisor, et cetera. I mean, something I look for is if I hear anything about um, construction noise and cleanliness. Uh, this is very important, you know. <sighs> Vietnam can be noisy, you know, roosters crowing and being close to the city centre noise, you know, often that can't be avoided, but cleanliness can be. Check if it has a 24-hour manned front desk. Or if not, make sure you have communicated with someone who can let you in that speaks English. I've had a flight delayed once uh, and the cab couldn't find the location. It was a new bungalow and 
literally down the alley, you couldn't see it. The driver didn't have a good grasp of English. So he was texting his mate and his mate then arrived on a scooter who could speak English and then was able to guide us through um, the details I had on my phone and then we were able to find it. And then he was able to switch back to Vietnamese and speak to the guy in Vietnamese to say, you know, you need to let this lady in. So uh, just making sure that uh, if you if you can ideally have a 24-hour man desk, definitely uh, seek that one out. One thing about Vietnam, it has lots of tiny streets, alleys, battle axe blocks, and some roads that are just not accessible by car. So be sure prior to arrival, you have as a screenshot the map location and full address on your phone. So so saved as a picture. Based on the fact you may not have a SIM card as yet, or you, you know, you're deciding not to, uh, and you don't have access to Google Maps to, to get details for your hotel. You may also want to think about the level uh, or quality level you want to stay prior to booking. Let me explain some values and gradings so you know what I mean. Let's t start at two star. These are most likely best suited to budget travellers or long stay persons as their facilities certainly in cities may not be at a standard acceptable uh, in Western societies. However, in outer regions, you can get great value. Mostly will be homestays and it will feel like you're part of the family. You can only go by the reviews and I suggest you look into them closely. Three star. These are the ones which are hard to make a general statement about. I've had the fortune to stay at some amazing places that are classified as three star because their facilities fall short of the grading system. So don't dismiss them out of hand so easily as I stayed in a very cute place in Canto that was absolutely divine with a rustic charm you just wouldn't find anywhere else. I mean, the furniture was made by local wood carvers. The room had an outdoor shower beautiful beds with mosquito nets draped over them. It was snuggled into a hidden location close to the Mekong River. But it had uh, only one thing on the menu. A dog would walk me to the door each night after a few beers. It was very authentic experience. And that's where Vietnam is great, as you can mix up your stay with these kinds of accommodation options. And you know, the next day or the next day after that, you can move to a five-star resort. So there's lots of options. Now, in the four-star category, hotels in particular are very popular in this grading. There was a shortage about five years ago, but now this gap is well and truly filled with very nice hotels, starting from around 40 US dollars. From anywhere up from there, the only difference you are paying for is location. You will pay more in this category the closer you get to the city centre. If you are prepared to take taxis to everywhere, then you will get great value, but you may make up the cost in the taxis going back and forth, so give it some thought. In Hanoi especially, in the old quarter, you can get some great four-star boutique hotels with rooftop pools, with the only thing being it may be noisy with street noise. So just ask for a room at a higher level to try and get around that. It's worth it to be in a nice place and close to the action and have access to boutiques, restaurants and easy walking distance um, around the lake. Plus, the lake is divine at sun, sunrise and sunset. On weekends, they shut off the streets to traffic and people dance and walk around it as the sun goes down. Absolutely wonderful. I have some brilliant uh, memories of, of time around the lake. Five star. In this category, you will get all your famous brands, massive land areas and mostly out of town, mostly close to beaches unless you are in District 1 of Ho Chi Minh City where they go up instead of out. Typically, the prices uh, conform to their brand. You can, however, find a few brands that, you know, may not be so well known to you. These may be owned by chain Chinese or Koreans, and therefore they may typically be the predominant guests, which is fine. It will just influence the food and style of accommodation to suit. Homestays. A homestay is a unique kind of accommodation that began with humble kinds of expectations where a family had extra rooms they would rent out and bring the guests into their family for meals and help them with their travel plans. 
These still exist, but they are dying out, sadly. They tend to exist in more remote regions like the Hills District in the north and places like Sapa. Due to the fact you get what you get, as in don't whinge about the bed bugs, they are extremely cheap. Guest houses, well that term is quite loose again, these have kind of morphed into a version of a homestay and then the homestay has kind of morphed into a boutique kind of, I don't know, pension or bed and, bed and breakfast, the kind of place run by a family. Often they are just like oversized homes with lots of bedrooms all upstairs and more stairs and more stairs. Did I stress the stairs enough? Some now have pools as the owners have seen that a pool does draw customers, but you may not see any family member. Everything might be picking up a key from somebody at the front desk and that's it. So the idea of the guest house homestay kind of welcoming committee of a family may not exist in every situation, but you'll get that from the reviews and figure that out for yourself. So before you know it, you might think you're booking a homestay when it's re- in reality a small hotel and there's no family cooking, um, it's just all up to you. Read the fine print with your bookings, uh, make sure you aren't disappointed um, and um, you know check with your travel agent if you're booking through a travel agent to, to get verification. Vietnam has never really cottoned onto the villa concept, um, like in places like Bali or Cancun, for example. They do exist, but to me, the ones I have seen don't quite hit the mark as they don't tend to be self-contained. Just really, really big rooms opening out to pools or lush grounds or paddies. Um, But knowing Vietnam, that could change moving forward, especially as we travel post the COVID-19 pandemic. Accommodations that offer self-isolation of a kind, as in self-contained, may be the preferred small group stay or for a family. So let's say stay tuned for that one. Airbnb. Once Airbnb got a foothold in Vietnam, it went crazy. There are lots, especially in the private room category. They offer very good rates for long stays. They are great value if you want, uh, once again, that self-contained option with some cooking and refrigeration options to allow you to eat in. Not many will offer car parking. And of course, as we've talked about before, there's a reason for that as they don't expect you to rock up with a car for yourself. But if you rock up with a bike, um, yes, there will be areas for you and your bike. Your host or your hotel staff can become almost your best friend. I was staying in a hotel one time in Hoi An. I was bringing the girls I sponsor into uh, Hoi An for a visit. These are girls that I sponsor their education through a charity called um, CEF. And the girls, when I can, I love to see them when I am in Vietnam. The hotel agreed uh, I could bring the girls for like a day um, in the pool. Uh, They only agreed on the basis that the girls had swimmers. Now, I thought, oh, that was a bit strange, but um, I soon found out that uh, swimming isn't taught to everyone in Vietnam and um, most people can't swim as we know it uh, to save themselves. So, and uh, likewise, they don't own swimming costumes. Both girls had never been in a swimming pool and uh, I was stuck with worrying about the swimming costume Uh, option. So I'd made friends with the um, front desk staff and I asked one of the girls um, if they could help. The next thing I knew, I was on the back of a girl's bike and we were off to a shop to buy the swimmers based on the fact I would guess the sizes before they arrived and they would give me a full refund if um, they in fact did not fit, uh, fit. The story has a really happy ending in that the swimmers fit perfectly, but the girls were terrified of the pool. So we sat in the baby pool and had a lovely lunch. Um, So yeah, Uh, don't be afraid to ask. In Vietnam, anything and everything is possible. Finally, a couple of things that go as as pretty standard practice when um, you are staying in various accommodations in Vietnam. Handing in your passport at reception, uh, usually they will keep it as by law they need to. Don't worry, you will get it back and when you pay the bill. Some take a photocopy and give it back to you straight away, but don't don't be sort of made to feel nervous about them taking uh, your passport. It is standard practice. 
most places do include breakfast. Obviously, depending on your grading of stay will depend on the breakfast. Um, but they, they, they rate breakfast highly, so you can um, plan to uh, have that included. Not all hotels have lifts. We did talk about that a little bit earlier. Uh, so if you have lots of luggage and you are a big group, you may want to check before booking about the lifts. Camping and campsites are really not common. You can do it, but mostly in the national parks areas. But don't expect to check into a caravan park or log cabin style of place with all mod cons um, like you can in uh, many other countries. No place to sort of kind of plug in your electricity, so to speak. So those places are just not available, I'm afraid. You might like to check out um, a guy who does a lot of this style of accommodation as he gets around on a bike, and he's called the Rusty Compass. I'll put his contact link in my notes. He's got the best tips with maps to help you um, have a, a great time if you decide to take up this option of stay. So as your trip planning starts to crystallise, the biggest question you're going to have to ask yourself is, what will your length of stay be in total? I've seen people say, oh, it's only a small place, so we only need a night here and a night there. But by the time they have flown from wherever into Hanoi or Ho Chi Minh, settled into their hotel, their one night has not afforded them any time to explore the region and truly immerse themselves in the local culture. It can really taint your view of a location by being tired or rushed or exhausted from heat due to trying to fit too much into a day. Please, if you do one thing from my podcast, think carefully about how long in each place as it will impact your enjoyment factors. If I may, I'd like to share with you some recommendations for main city location. So here goes. Hanoi, minimum two to three nights, which includes the night you arrive and depending on, on if you want to take a day to a Ninh Binh, which is about four hours from Hanoi, um, something you, you, you should do. But think about what you will want to encompass in Hanoi, allowing at least a day and a half to take in the sites within Hanoi. Ho Chi Minh City, one to two nights. I'm I'm usually done after two nights in Ho Chi Minh City. It, it is chaos. It is madness. Um, I do have some strike points there that I definitely want to go and see. So I do that and I, I really want to get out. How long Bay? I, I really encourage you if you can afford in time uh, an overnight stay in Halong Bay. It's only a very short trip now. It's only a two-hour trip, two hours there and two hours back. But I don't know, there's just something lovely about waking up um, in the bay and uh, and enjoying the sights. So if you can, you know, a 1.5 overnight stay there. You're going to be surprised when I say Hoi An, five nights. Um, I can remember doing trips to Hoi An many years ago and we'd say, you know, two to four nights was about the average. It's actually now five to seven nights is the average as people have just found that there's so much to do and within, um, you know, a short hour's drive, you can reach many other uh, attractions that will, will keep you, family and your collective group um very, very happy. So five nights, um, able to relax by the beach, take it all in and, and enjoy it at a pace um, that, that does make it enjoyable. You might want to tack on a night to Da Nang there. I certainly like one night. I, I tend to choose Da Nang as um, my first night in, Viet, uh, in Vietnam uh, if I'm coming uh, straight into the central region because there's just some really nice places in Da Nang now to go to make it worth that one night. Natrang two nights. Uh, Natrang City itself hasn't got a whole heap going for it. Once again, it depends on the experience you want. If you want to lay by the beach and uh, you want to enjoy, you know, beach clubs and beach bars, etc., you know, you might want to extend that to to two or three nights, four nights maybe. Dalat is a very romantic city. Um, it's a little bit off the the uh, traditional tourist map. Very pretty place. Once again, you're going to be doing lots of touring around Dalat, up into the hills, looking at Pongal waterfalls and and just various areas around that are just so picturesque. So you do need, um, I think, two to three nights as a minimum in Dalat. Sapa, um, 
once again, depending on whether or not you want to do some trekking, you want to do some some climbing uh, mountains, etc., and really immerse yourself in the local culture, you know, a minimum two nights, maybe expand that to three or four. Way is one night. I think um, even for your history buff person, if that's you, um, Hawaii, uh, I think I think you'd cover most of the important um, places in uh, you know two days, one night. Uh, if you're if you're an island person and you'd like to uh, experience Fuqua, two to three nights relaxation there, flop and drop. Please use this as um, it's, it's a guide. It's my guide. It really all depends on how you're going to get around, train, plane, or automobile. We have talked about the the time that um, traveling uh, between cities takes up, so you don't want to be using too much of that time in getting from one place to another. Activities take time. They eat up days. The heat adds another level of exhaustion and, you know, you can find yourself in bed early after a morning climbing Marble Mountain, you know, revisiting the Golden Hand at um, Barna Hills. You know, time flies very, very fast and uh, it's easily um, taken up. My last piece of advice here is afford yourself uh, extra time. Whatever you thought you needed, just add on a little bit extra just to, to give yourself that feeling like it is a holiday and it, it's not a full activity set. So in wrapping up this session, covering booking accommodation, there are, are of course many ways to book, online, via a travel agent or direct. With the advent of online travel agents like Agoda, Booking.com, sometimes going direct is not the cheapest option, but sometimes you can get extra value built into your price. So always check both options. I know one hotel in Ho Chi Minh City, um, it's kind of my stock standard favorite now. It actually offers, uh, with a two-night stay, a free pickup or a free drop to the airport. Now, that is not offered on the booking.com or a go-to site. So I get the same rate, but I get that extra deal included. Please check with the episode notes for any links mentioned, and I do always try to add as much as I can there. Um, so please check my notes. I look forward to paving the way for you to have a magical time in Vietnam as I share more episodes, more tips uh, and um, advice about how to tour Vietnam and get the best out of it. Thank you for listening. Bye for now. We hope you've enjoyed this week's episode. Remember to rate, review and subscribe. What about Vietnam? A podcast with Gary Newsom.